Hello, and welcome to Moments in History. I'm Linda Shenton Matchett, author, speaker, and history geek. While researching my stories, I unearth tons of intriguing historical information that does not end up in my books. So I've created this channel so I can share them with you. The origins of the Liberty Ship can be traced to a design proposed by the British in 1940. Seeking to replace wartime losses, the British placed contracts with U.S. shipyards for 60 steamers of the Ocean class. These steamers were of simple design and featured a single, coal-fired, 2,500 horsepower reciprocating steam engine. Now, while the coal-fired steam engine was obsolete, it was reliable, and Britain possessed a large supply of coal. While the British ships were being constructed, the U.S. Maritime Commission examined the design and made several alterations to lessen the cost and speed of construction. The most significant change to the original design was to replace much of the riveting with welded seams. A new practice, the use of welding decreased labor costs and required fewer skilled workers. Liberty ships served in all theaters with distinctions and carried two-thirds of U.S. cargo. Throughout the war, Liberty ships were manned by members of the U.S. Merchant Marine, with gun crews provided by the U.S. Naval Armed Guard. For defense, each ship mounted a 4-inch deck gun atop the aft deckhouse. Additional anti-aircraft defenses were added as the war progressed. President Roosevelt attended the launching of the first Liberty ship on September 27, 1941 at the Bethlehem Fairfield Shipyard in Baltimore, Maryland. The ship, named at the SS Patrick Henry, was named after the Revolutionary War hero, whose famous Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death speech inspired the ship's nickname. At the launching, the president praised the shipyard workers, saying, With every new ship, they are striking a blow at the menace to our nation and the liberty of the free peoples of the world. He proclaimed that the ships would help to bring a new kind of liberty to people around the world. However, at a later date, while reviewing blueprints of the Liberty ships at the White House, the president, who loved naval vessels and had an eye for design, was said to have mused out loud to Maritime Commission Administrator Admiral Emery Land, I think this ship will do us well. She'll carry a good load. She isn't much to look at, though, is she? A real ugly duckling. Thus, the Liberty ships received their second nickname, the Ugly Ducklings. As the war progressed, the ships were also utilized as trip, troop transports in the convoys. Over time, the ships were deemed too slow and small, so a new line of ships was built named Victory Ships. While it took about 230 days to build one Liberty ship in the first year, the average construction time eventually dropped to 42 days, with three new ships being launched every day in 1943. One ship, the SS Robert E. Perry, was built in four and a half days during a publicity stunt. The cost for each ship was around $2 million. Liberty ships were 441 feet long, which is approximately one and a half football fields, and 56 feet wide. Their three-cylinder reciprocating steam engine fed by two oil-burning boilers produced 2,500 horsepower and a speed of 11 knots, or 12.65 miles per hour. Holds could carry over 9,000 tons of cargo, plus airplanes, tanks, and locomotives lashed to the deck. A Liberty could also carry 2,840 Jeeps, 440 tanks, or 230 million rounds of ammunition, a true workhorse. The ships were named after prominent deceased Americans, starting with the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Any group that raised $2 million in war bonds could suggest a name. Thus, one is named for the founder of the 4-H movement in Kansas, the first Ukrainian immigrant to America, an organizer for the International Ladies' Garment Union, and the woman who suggested the poppy as a symbol of American soldiers who died in World War I. The Francis J. O'Gara was named after a mariner who was presumed dead, but who was in fact a prisoner of war. He was the only person to visit a Liberty ship named in his honor. Other noteworthy names are Abigail Adams, Abner Doubleday, Amelia Earhart, George Eastman, Ida Tarbell, James Fenimore Cooper, P.D. Barnum, Bocahannes, Virginia Dare, and Walt Whitman. There were 16 U.S. shipyards that produced Liberty ships. 
Alabama Dry Dock and Shipbuilding in Mobile, Alabama, Bethlehem Fairfield Shipyard in Baltimore, Maryland, California Shipbuilding Corporation in Los Angeles, Delta Shipbuilding Corporation in New Orleans, J.A. Jones in Panama City, Florida, J.A. Jones in Brunswick, Georgia, Kaiser Company in Vancouver, Washington, Marin Ship in Sausalito, California, New England Shipbuilding East Yard in South Portland, Maine, New England Shipbuilding West Yard in South Portland, Maine, North Carolina Shipbuilding Company in Wilmington, North Carolina, Oregon Shipbuilding Corporation in Portland, Oregon, Richmond Shipyards in Richmond, California, St. John's River Shipbuilding in Jacksonville, Florida, Southeastern Shipbuilding in Savannah, Georgia, Todd Houston Shipbuilding in Houston, Texas. However, the majority, 1,552 of these Liberty ships came from new yards built and operated by one Henry J. Kaiser. Best known for building the Bay Bridge and the Hoover Dam, Kaiser pioneered new shipbuilding techniques. Operating four yards in Richmond, California and three in the Northwest, he developed methods for prefabricating and mass-producing the Liberty ships. Components were built all across the United States and transported to the shipyards where the vessels could be assembled in record time. During the war, a Liberty ship could be built in about two weeks at a Kaiser yard. The final ship of the design was the SS Albert M. Bow, which was finished at Portland, Maine's New England Shipbuilding on October 30, 1945. Initially designed to last five years, many Liberty ships continued to ply the seaways into the 70s. In addition, many of the shipbuilding techniques employed in the Liberty program became standard practice across the industry and are still used today. On December 6, 1941, the SS Zebulon B. Vance was the first Liberty ship launched in Wilmington, North Carolina, just hours before the attack on Pearl Harbor. The Vance made several successful runs to London before being damaged by a mine on a return trip. The ship was returned, repaired, and returned to the Liberty Fleet. Later, the ship was converted to a hospital ship and renamed the USS John J. Meany. It was then reconverted back to the Vance and used to transport war bride dependents of American military personnel to the United States. About 200 liberties were lost to torpedoes, mines, explosions, or kamikazes during the war, and two liberty ships, the USS Jeremiah O'Brien in San Francisco and the SS John W. Brown in Baltimore, survive as museum ships and are open to the public for tours and occasional cruises. As part of the North Carolina Artificial Reef Program, the Liberty ship SS Theodore Parker was sunk in 50 feet of water just off Fort Macon near Moorhead City and became a popular site for scuba divers and fishermen. I hope you've enjoyed today's moment in history. If you want to learn even more history, please stop by my blog, which is found on my website at www.lindashentonmatchett.com. Please consider just subscribing to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon to receive notifications of new episodes that release on the second and fourth Fridays of each month. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.